Hello and welcome to another episode. Now, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down Bingin. Now, for me, Bingin was one of the most frustrating waves to surf in the world. So please excuse the negativity. I was fresh out of the surf, really frustrated, really angry. But one of the things I want to do on this channel is showcase what surf trips are actually like sometimes. It's not always that dreamy and not always that fun. But still, hope you found the video helpful and informative. So let's roll the tape. Super sharp. <laughs> So yeah, just got in from that session at, at Bingin. Basically barely caught a wave and just got frustrated and went in. As you saw, there was like head high sets and when they came, they're okay. There was like beautiful little barrels and walls for turns as it started to get a bit higher. But yeah, I just found it so frustrating. I don't know if you guys experience this in the same way, but you know, when you go on surf trips and you go to these like really famous spots, you kind of expect to get a certain amount of waves or certain wave quality but so often like especially when the waves are really good and it's really crowded i find that I, I just never get that as well to be honest like shallow crowded left hand reef breaks are definitely not my forte so i can't that's kind of added into the mix as well but yeah when i paddled out there was like 15 guys out there which i didn't think was too bad i thought it was going to be more crowded and then gradually that 15 became 30 and more being in it's got such like a tight takeoff spot you can't escape the crowd, you know, like at Uluwatu or like longer point breaks, like Snapper in Australia, for example, because it's so long, you can kind of like find little pockets where, you know, people might not make a section or, you know, it gets a bit too racy and you can kind of tee off that a little bit and just get waves, you just got a bit more space. But here it's like just a tiny little takeoff spot. So you've got 30 people all just rotating. Um, and this morning as well, there wasn't even any locals out there. So, so I can't even imagine what it's like on a better day when there's locals, like pros, good surfers, and then everybody else. It must be fucked up. I mean, like I've only really surfed it once or twice, but yeah, if you surfed it more, more than me, please let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. So just to break it down a little bit further, if you did want to surf being in, it's on like the Bukit Peninsula, which is Bali's like Southern Peninsula and there's, amazing waves there. I'm going to be making a full video breaking down the area, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, being in, you park in this little area here, as you can see on the map, and then walk down hundreds of stairs, pretty gnarly on the way back up and after you've just been surfing all day. And then yeah, I just paddled like straight out across the lagoon, and then as it gets shallow again, before the wave starts, there's like this little piece of reef, so climbed up onto that, walked across jumped off and then kind of paddled around the back. That's what I did. I, I don't know if you still do that on like a bigger day. I saw a few people paddling from kind of down at the bottom of the wave. Again, I'm not sure which is the best or, or right way technically, but I found it all right. But yeah, if it's bigger, it's probably a bit more sketchy to do that. And then yeah, it's just like a really nuggy like left barrel. Now when I, like this morning, only like the sets were barreling and then the kind of in-between ones are a bit like almondy, so it's kind of better just to do turns so every five or ten minutes there'll be the odd set with maybe one or two of the waves might barrel i was just like picking off scraps for turns in between so you have to kick out quite quickly it's not necessarily it's not a very long wave so you've only really got time for like one or two turns and then you've got to kick out because it 
get shallow like really quick. And then ideally for being in, you kind of, I guess want like a solid southwest swell. So when Uluwatu is like massive, that's when like, I guess being in and Padang Padang get, get really good. And there's like proper barrels on those days, like everywhere on the book, it gets insanely crowded. Like I honestly just thought it was unsurfable because of the crowd. <laughs> um, and then when you add in like not being confident in those kind of waves, it's just like a horrible experience. So yeah, to sum up what's being in actually like, it's fucking frustrating <laughs> to be honest i don't know how else to describe it but yeah just insanely crowded really shallow but yeah if you're confident at barrel riding and shallow reef break and you're a lot more patient than i am you can definitely score amazing waves there kind of thought i'd throw this one out there as a bonus video um obviously i didn't get many waves in this but i hope you found this helpful please like and subscribe if you did but for now it's goodbye from me and i'll see you in the next episode